Coming to the next subtopic, what is the vector along the bisector of two given vectors? Now, I am using this term bisector. What do you mean by bisector of two given vectors? It simply means a vector, if this is making an angle theta, a vector which passes through this such that it divides this theta into theta by 2 and theta by 2, such a vector r bar is called as the bisector of these two vectors a bar and b bar. Now the challenge is to find what this vector r bar is, how it looks like, right? But uh, it sometimes gets difficult, you know, to remember the formula as far as bi bisectors is concerned. Uh, when I saw it for the first time, I remember uh, it was not very, very clear as to what it is. But I would like to make it as clear as I, as I can uh, for you guys. Uh, so let's see uh, how there's a bi bisector. Let's actually build this concept using something that we already know. So, for example, if I give you a parallelogram, if I give you a parallelogram where this side is A and this side is B, if they are unequal, if A is not equal to B, then this is the resultant, right? This is your first vector, this is your second vector. Resultant will be something like this, the diagonal, right? Diagonal is the resultant. Now, will this angle be equal to this angle? If I call this as alpha and beta, is alpha equal to beta? The answer is no, because this side A and side B are not the same and the vector, the resultant vector will always be bent, it will always be bent towards the bigger vector, right? There's something that it's very evident from the shape. If I make this big and this small, for example, then this will be my resultant. And as you can see, this is bent more towards this, but this is bent more closer to this, right? It is, this is huge. This angle is huge here. That means this side is actually towards this. And here this angle, uh, as you can see, uh, this particular angle is bigger. That means it is more bent towards the bigger side. When will it exactly be in the middle? When will the diagonal be exactly in the middle? The diagonal is exactly in the middle if the two sides of your parallelogram are the same. For example, if you take a rhombus, if your A and A both are same, then this diagonal will exactly bisect. Then this will be theta and this will be theta. It will not be bent in favor of any of these two because they are both the same magnitude, right? Here, I have no... What you do is basically, uh, you construct a parallelogram uh, taking these two vectors. The resultant is this vector, right? This is your a bar plus b bar. But you can't guarantee that this a bar plus b bar is bisecting this angle between a bar and b bar. So let me make that angle. That angle is theta. Right. You don't know if this, if this is basically being bisected. But to make sure it bisects, what you can do is, if I take a vector, if I take a unit vector along this direction, if I take a unit vector, along both directions. What is the unit vector along this direction? It is B cap, right? Because this direction is B bar, the unit vector along this direction is B cap, which is B bar by mod B, right? This is what a unit vector is. You take a vector and if you divide it with its magnitude, you get a unit vector along that direction, right? Similarly, what is the unit vector along this direction? A bar, it is A cap. A cap is nothing but A bar by mod A. Now, take Take a look at these two arms. If I take this arm, this has a magnitude of one unit. If I take this arm, this has a magnitude of one unit. What is this arm? This arm is B bar by mod B. This is my vector. This arm, this arm is A bar by mod A. This is another vector. If I take the resultant of these two, if I take the resultant of these two, then this vector will exactly bisect the angle. It will make it theta by 2 and theta by 2, right? So if I take the resultant of these two, then my new vector will exactly bisect this angle. So this new vector has the formula a bar by mod a plus b bar by mod b. This is the resultant, right? This is the resultant of these two unit vectors. Now, the thing is, 
I just need a vector. Uh, so if I look at this, if I look at these two vectors, if this is theta, I just need a vector which bisects this theta. Now the ve vector can be this big, it can be this big, it can be this big, it can be infinitely big, right? It can be anything, but it, it just has to bisect the angle. That means the resultant can be lambda into a bar by mod a plus b bar by mod b. Let me explain you this notation. Now, this lambda can be any real number. What will this lambda do? If I keep changing this lambda, that means the length, the length of this resultant that you, this blue resultant that you see, which bisects this into theta by twos, like this pink theta into theta by twos, the length of this vector keeps changing depending on how big the lambda is. If lambda is huge, this vector will be huge, right? If lambda is small, then this vector, you know, it, you know, it might just be this big. It might just be this big. So depending upon what your lambda is, that will decide the length of this vector r bar. But what is this r bar? This r bar is the bisector. It is the bisector along two vectors. How did I first find it? I first found it using this expression. What did this do? I basically found unit vectors along this direction and calculated the resultant of the unit vectors because that will make sure that my angle is divided into theta by 2 and theta by 2. Why? Because only if the side magnitudes are same, only then this vector will not tilt in any direction. It will be exactly in the middle. If I take any other thing, there is no guarantee. Other than unit vectors, if I take any other thing, there is no guarantee whether the magnitudes will be the same or not. Right? It can be bent in either directions and then it won't be a bisector. So, this is the formula that you need to remember uh, as far as angular bisector is concerned. Uh, there's another formula. In fact, if you put a minus, you can also put a minus sign in the middle here. You can also put a minus sign. It can be plus or minus. Both are valid. So if I ask, if I give you a vector a bar, if I give you a vector b bar, if I ask you what is the angular bisector uh, or what is the bisector of these two vectors, bisector will be something like lambda into a bar by mod a plus or minus b bar by mod b. Now plus is something that we have already seen. Why am I using minus here? Why am I using minus? Because the thing is, uh, let me just make some space here to explain you why minus is valid. So these are your two vectors. Uh, this was your b bar. This was your a bar, right? If I take minus, that means I'm taking something like a bar by mod a minus b bar by mod b. What will minus b bar by mod b look like? It will be something like a bar by mod a plus of minus b bar by mod b. So this is this minus b bar by mod b is this is a unit vector in this direction in the opposite to b right this is like minus b cap so if your b cap is like this minus b cap will be something like this so this is your vector in the opposite direction so now you're taking a cap this is your a cap right and this is your b cap so you're taking a cap like this you're taking minus b cap and you're calculating their resultant and this is also an angular bisector, right? So if your vectors are like this, it's creating sort of, even this is an angle between the two vectors, even this is an angle, even this is an angle, right? So to account for both this and this angle, I'm having a plus and a minus. Plus will account for this, minus will account for this. And if my lambda is negative and I'm using plus, then that will account for this angle. And if my lambda is negative and I'm using minus, then that will account for this angle. So all four angles have been taken care of, right? So let me just repeat. This is your A bar. This is your B bar, right? I mean, I'm starting from here. If, if both my, uh, let me just, you know, rewrite it. This is lambda. If both my lambda, if I take my lambda greater than zero, and if I take the positive sign here, that means I'm calculating the angular bisector along this direction. If I take my lambda less than zero and then I'm taking the positive direction, that means I'm calculating the angular bisector along this direction where it is bisecting the angle along this direction. If lambda was less than zero and then I took positive, then it was not this. It was this. It was this direction. This angular bisector. If, I, if my lambda is greater than zero and if I take negative sign, then I'm taking an angular bisector along this direction. 
and if both my lambdas and you know this is also negative and my lambda is also less than zero that means i'm taking the angular bisector along this direction so all four angles have been taken care of so the comp so the sign of lambda and plus or minus that gives rise to all four possibilities so this is all that you needed to know as far as a uh, vector along the bisector of two given vectors is concerned lambda's lambda's direction will decide the direction of the vector and lambda's length lambda's magnitude will decide the length of the angular bisector right so with this we complete this topic let's move on with the next topic which is uh, linear combination of vectors